Hey, Iostax here. In today's video, I want to go over the graphical settings in Overwatch and how you can modify them for maximum competitiveness. But first I want to explain why you want to do this. Overwatch has input lag, which basically references the amount of time it takes for an input, for example from your mouse, to have an effect in game. Press Ctrl, Shift and N inside of the game. This doesn't work in the menus, I just use the practice range. And have a look at the sim value on the top left. It is formatted in the lowest average and maximum value since you pressed the button. Ideally you want the average to be below 10 milliseconds. Everything above has a very noticeable effect in game and most computers today with just tweaking some of the settings should be able to reach a sim value below 10. Alright, let's start with the first settings. We have borderless windowed and full screen. The advantages of borderless windowed are that all tabbing becomes a lot faster for multitasking, that it uses your monitors and windows default calibration, which means that colors look perfect right from the get-go. However, you have higher input lag using it and your performance isn't as good when using full screen. So if input lag and maximum competitiveness is your primary goal, then you should definitely set it to full screen. Next up, resolution. In my opinion, you should just use your native re resolution because this causes the least blurry picture. Also, make sure to select the correct, which in most cases is the highest refresh rate. You can see that in the little brackets at the end of the resolution. Keep in mind that when you are using borderless windowed, using the refresh rate in the resolution settings doesn't really affect it. It'll just use windows refresh rate. Next up, field of view. Field of view basically measures the angle that you have in your own field of view basically. So the higher the field of vision, the more you can see. This does have an effect on frame rate since the higher the field of view, the more your GPU has to render of your surroundings. However, there's basically no point in using anything below 103 degrees, which is the default. This may reduce performance, but seeing more is incredibly important. There is nothing worse than missing someone at the edge of your screen. Next up, VSync. This limits the frame rate to the refresh rate of your monitor or the one that you have specified in the resolution settings. This does help with screen tearing, which is an artifact that happens if your frame rate is higher than your refresh rate where the picture kind of looks like it's torn apart, but I personally don't notice it at all. In my opinion, you should just turn it off because it just lowers your FPS, which means it'll increase your input lag and thus causes slower aiming. Triple buffering is like vSync, but with one more frame rendered in advance. Again, this helps with tearing and makes the game feel smoother, but every input is even more delayed. For maximum competitiveness, you want to turn this off. Reduce buffering is a new setting that came with the Oasis patch, and you should just turn it on. It reduces input lag by a very small amount, but it's better than nothing, and you don't lose anything by turning it on. Limit FPS. Okay, this is a little bit more interesting. The two viable options are custom, with it being at 300 FPS, and display-based. Um, don't even bother with using 30 FPS, it's just going to let your input lag go through the roof. Um, so custom 300 FPS is best for reduced input lag. However, if you don't reach 300 FPS consistently, which you probably won't, I have a 1070 and I don't, then you will suffer from fl uh, fluctuating input lag. This screws with your muscle memory big time. The option that I use is display based. You should use it if your frame rate doesn't go over your re refresh rate by that much. For example, I have a 144 hz monitor and in tough situations I can reach about 170 FPS. It usually doesn't dip below that. So I use display base to limit it to 155, which is basically your monitor's refresh rate plus 10. So if you have a 60 hz monitor, then your um, frame rate will be limited to a little over 70. This means that my input lag is higher than it could be, however this time it stays consistent, which helps a lot with aiming. Render scale. Everything below 100% render scale looks really, really blur. Um, only set it to something below 100 if you have massive frame rate issues. Setting it over 100% is not recommended. This just lowers your frame rate for a smoother picture. Setting it below 100%, however, will hinder your vision, especially at long ranges. So it's up to you. Do you want to sacrifice visibility, but you know have lower input lag because your frame rate will be increased, or vice versa? I personally have 100% render scale. Okay, texture quality is a little simpler to explain. Um, unless your GPU is 10 years old, then just set it to high. It doesn't affect your frame rate at all. It increases VRAM usage, but setting it to high and playing at 4K, it only takes 890 megabytes. And my GPU has over 8000 megabytes of VRAM. So 
it makes the game prettier with no performance loss. So in my opinion, everyone should just have it turned to max. The same applies with texture filtering. Just set it to max, which is epic 16 times filtering. It makes textures prettier when looked at at an angle. And there's no performance loss. Even your potato PC should be able to run it. Local fog detail is a little complicated. Um, ideally, it's turned off. Fog only hinders your vision, which is bad for competitive play, obviously, and it can reduce your frame rate as well. So, if it, if input lag and competitiveness is all you care about, then you should definitely turn it off. Ah, dynamic reflections. Please just turn it off. The difference it makes visually is not noticeable at all, and it takes up to 50% of your frame rate. On the practice range, I can get 300 FPS when it's turned off, but as soon as I turn it on, my frame rate dips below 170 FPS, which is still plenty, but this makes a massive difference in input lag. So just turn it off. This is easily the most demanding setting in the game, and I have no idea why it takes up so many resources. So shadow detail does affect frame rate quite a bit, however, you shouldn't turn it off completely. Shadows can help with getting information. For example, you can see the shadows of characters around corners. I personally have it set to low. This is the best compromise of frame rate and gameplay benefit. Model detail. This is kind of like texture quality. Um, it doesn't really affect your frame rate. It makes your weapon and some character models better looking. And it's also used to make some foliage disappear at lower settings. However, I'm pretty sure that they fixed that though. So I personally have it set to ultra and I don't think you're missing out on anything if you do the same. Effects detail. This can hurt the frame rate quite a bit. I personally have it set to low. Effects are distracting and they hog your frame rate in team fight situations. This is mainly for stuff like fire, smoke and certain abilities like Zarya's Graviton Surge. Lighting quality. This makes certain objects glow as of recent, for example Reinhardt's shield, Zarya's gun and certain lamps in the map. The game does look a lot better with it set to max, however it hurts your, uh, hurts your frame rate. I have it set to low for better input lag. Anti-aliasing quality. You have the choice between FXAA and SMAA. FXA doesn't decrease your frame rate usually, however it makes the game and its textures very blurry. In my opinion you shouldn't use it, it's not really worth it, it just hinders your vision. SMA, SMA on the other hand is better, however it can hurt your frame rate. Only use it if edges look very pixelated. For competitive play having anti-aliasing turned off is ideal. Refraction quality adds a shockwave effect around explosions, so for instance McCree's flashbang, concussive blast and tracer's bomb. This looks really nice and it doesn't really affect frame rate by much. It also can help with judging the range of uh, explosives. I personally have it turned off, but if you have frame rate problems, then you may want to turn it off. Local reflections. This makes your gun shiny. It hurts frame rate a little. However, golden guns look like shit when it's turned off. I personally have it turned on for maximum competitiveness. However, you may want to turn it off. And last but not least, ambient occlusion. This makes corners and props look more realistic by making the shadows around them smoother. This can drop frame rate drastically, however. The game looks a lot nicer with it turned on, but again, for maximum competitiveness, I personally have it turned off. Another very important thing to mention is to make sure that your monitor is operating at its highest refresh rate. Simply right-click your desktop, open Display Settings, go into Advanced Display Settings, select your monitor and then open the Adapter Properties. And there you can make sure that your uh, Hertz and refresh rate is set to its maximum. Alright, that does it for this video. Minimizing your input lag is one of the first things you have to do. Any muscle memory you build for a certain input lag is completely useless when it changes. This is also the reason some people have trouble aiming when swapping from 60Hz to 144Hz. But lowering your input lag is insanely important. Let me know if this helped you out and what kind of sim value you are getting. I had people in my discord ask me questions regarding this and as it turned out one of them had his display operated 30Hz. Even though he had a GTX 660, a graphics card that can reach frame rates well above that. His input lag improved drastically and I hope that you can achieve similar results. My name is Aerostax and I'd like to thank you for learning.